Hi guys and welcome to my studio. Today is Wednesday. Um, yeah, it's Wednesday. So happy Wednesday or any other day you might be watching this video. And I do a lot of traditional and digital sketchbooking these days. So digital sketchbooking like this. And um, I thought I will do a video on this topic because uh, I think digital and also traditional sketchbooking or sketchbooking in general helped me a lot to basically gain more confidence in my art and basically improve my art skills. So I thought I can share with you some tips which helped me and uh, might help you too. So now let's roll the clips from the sketchbooking session in the cafe. So one of the main reasons that I draw outside is to get new ideas and there is something unique about drawing outdoors because we are stepping out of our comfort zone, out of our studio and also venturing out into the wild. In addition to that, to me there is a certain magic in combining a cozy sketchbook session with a bustling cafe atmosphere and of course the aromatic allure of coffee. We can be more poetic about coffee. I guess you know by now that I really like coffee. <laughs> anyway, so first off let's talk about art supplies. What helps me a lot and can help you immensely too is pre-deciding what you are going to use during the sketchbook session. So the fewer decisions you have to make at the moment, the more you can focus on your artwork. Basically, I mainly focus in the moment on what I want to draw and what I see in front of me and not thinking uh, which tool was the one I liked last time for this part. So anyway, <laughs> of course, I also draw with more tools in other sketchbook sessions, but I think this limiting of art tools is a good challenge for sketchbook sessions. And in this case, I'm drawing digitally, as you can see, uh, so I'm already limiting myself to one tool. Well, I mean, uh, with digital sketchbooking, you have an unlimited amount of colors and unlimited amount of brush options. So in this case, I would create a limitation for myself again and not use all the brushes available. So personally, I found that limiting myself to just one or two brushes for the cafe sketchbook session works wonders because it might seem restrictive at first and there are oh, so many cool brushes <laughs> that I always want to use, but it actually sparks creativity uh, as you figure out different ways to use your limited tools because basically you just have to work around the limitation. And I already mentioned the colors and I love using colors and creating new color palettes and basically playing with colors when sketchbooking. But it can also be very overwhelming, especially when trying to capture the scene quickly on location because sometimes people move quickly or you want to draw something which is not there later. And very often I want to try a new color palette when drawing on location and then I don't like it. I mean, I don't like the outcome. And then I spend time fixing the colors of the sketch rather than focusing on the scene in front of me, the composition or the objects that I want to draw. So here is what I do. I stick to black and white for some sketchbooking sessions, as you can see in this one. It eliminates the burden of choosing colors and saves me from potential frustration if I end up not liking the color combination. So this might be helpful for you too. So you can try it out just sketching with black and white, maybe just line art and adding some shadows. So as you can see in this case, I'm focusing on the lines, shapes, some light and shadows. And it's quite simple and <laughs> liberating in this case. 
And if you want to practice the color and light during some sketchbooking sessions and drawing outside, you can do another sketchbooking session focusing on that, which I usually do. And now onto choosing your spot while drawing. This might be more crucial than you might think, because especially if you're more introverted and don't like many people talking to you in public, I mean strangers coming up to you, because sometimes I like chatting with strangers and other times I just want to have a quiet sketchbooking session just by myself, even though, yeah, I'm in the cafe, there are a lot of other people, but I want to focus on what I'm drawing and the shapes and the composition, as I mentioned. So when I draw outside, uh, I notice many times that people walking by get very curious and want to look and comment on what you are doing, which is nice. But if I am starting my sketch and I'm not very happy with it yet, <laughs> I sometimes get self-conscious and I don't want other people to see it just yet. So if you feel the same, find a spot where you feel at ease with minimal foot traffic. So for example, a corner uh, of the cafe or a seat with your back to the wall, which can work great because then people walking by don't see right away what you are drawing. And if you want, you can always show it to them. So. And if you want to immerse yourself in sketching and not worrying about the curious eyes of people walking by, try to find a spot in the corner or just by some wall and then you can also look at the cafe from a better angle. And also, let's not forget to talk about, about one of the most essential components of cafe sketchbooking your favorite snack or drink. This is also one of the things I love about sketching in the cafes. So I think that sketchbooking is about practice and enjoying the process and what's better way to do so than with a mouthful of your favorite treat or a sip of heartwarming drink. So one of my favorite treats is cheesecake or cinnamon roll uh, and I would love to know what are your favorite treats so let me know in the comments. And after moving away from Scandinavia, I miss those cinnamon rolls that you can get there in almost every cafe and I love how they taste over there. So now when I can't get the same cinnamon rolls as I was buying there, when drawing in the cafe, I often get something healthier, so some simple snack or just a coffee. And uh, when drawing, I often get iced coffee now because it doesn't get cold like a regular coffee when I basically draw for a more extended period of time. And it still tastes good because not just like room temperature coffee, which was supposed to be hot, the iced coffee is still good after a longer period of time. Okay, and what about the sketch and the subjects that I'm sketching? When uh, you have your favorite drink on your side, just try to take a look and find inspiration in the most mundane things. For example, a coffee cup, a sugar dispenser, a vase with flowers on the table, cakes in the cake display. And if you feel more confident with drawing people, sketch some of them sitting in the cafe around you. And then you can also add some of your favorite things to draw on this sketchbook spread as well. For example, I added a dog because I just love to draw animals, even though there were no dogs running around in the cafe, obviously. Well, you don't see it that often, <laughs> which might be uh, very interesting to see. But one dog, I mean, one cute dog was sitting under the table nearby, so that was nice. And if you're sketching outdoors or in a cafe for the first time, you might be unhappy with your sketches, but the practice and trying to capture the moment and also creating a visual memory, it's I think more important and it's not about getting every detail right, because I mean, it's sketchbook, right? <laughs> And all in all, uh, sketching every day or as often as possible adds to your growth as an artist. So even if it is not a masterpiece, I think it's still valuable. And that's it. I hope that you found this Draw With Me session inspiring and enjoyable. So thank you so much for joining me here in my small corner of the internet. And I appreciate you being here so much. 
So stay curious, keep sketching, keep exploring and most importantly, keep creating. So until the next video, bye!